pass me the presenter right to me or Uh, wait. Larry, can you make for a presenter? Oh, sorry, I could. I'm not hearing him particularly well. So just a second. Um, all right. So I'm sorry. Who was it that needs to be presented? Is it JP? No, no. Uh, Pramod. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, all right. Okay, hopefully that worked. Yeah. It worked fine. Thanks.
what we did is uh, we have three, uh, basically three items which we showcase on top of SD Cloud, uh, which are primarily the engineering sandboxes where uh, developers and testers could actually uh, get a working environment, a private working environment for them, and then they can use that for their uh, development or solution integration, etc. And typically for solution showcase, we uh, primarily target towards the sales folks or the proof of concepts kind of thing where uh, people can bring up some of these services and then uh, do solutions and everything else on top of it. And learning is typically structured around the same thing, right? So where we have a lot of e-learning content, specifically targeted around uh, the SDN and NFP use cases. And then we also have a virtual private labs where people can get hands on on top of some of these items. Right. So, typically what we want to do with CORD is basically we have uh, integrated CORD 1.0 as part of our engineering sandbox effort uh, where we can actually get a CORD 1.0 up and running uh, on our platform. Right? Your SD Cloud, sorry, your SD Cloud platform isn't actually a platform, right? It's, it's sort of the name of your internal program or something. Like CORD, we call it a platform, right? Because I don't so, know. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, typically what we have, it's not an internal program, it's, it's a SaaS based platform, right? I mean, uh, I, when I show you the demo, basically, uh, I can show you it has a UI and stuff, so where you can just go and click, select the different controllers, and then uh, click on spawn. So basically, you get a complete, uh, let's say, a card enabled setup prepared for you, right? And you can either get it on a virtual environment or on a bare metal environment with different uh, configurations, actually. So could I, could I, you, you can see we're anxious to get to the details, but let me ask a similar question. Um, we leverage, we currently leverage a, it's approximately a middle as a service facility called uh, Open Cloud. It was built more for academic and research. We, we have been using it. It would be great if we could use your platform instead. Uh, sure. Do you know Open Cloud and could you compare... I'm sorry, Cloud Lab. I'm saying it wrong. Cloud Lab. Um, yeah. Can we think of uh, SD Cloud as an alternative to Cloud Lab? Exactly, right? So that's where I think uh, we are coming over there. So, what, uh, so basically, what we do is uh, in the Cloud Lab, uh, they actually provide you the uh, bare metal infrastructure, right? And typically, what you uh, host is on top of it is basically the images or anything else which you kind of bring it up on top of the Cloud Lab. Uh, so similarly, what we have is the uh, uh, SD Cloud is kind of a similar thing, where in which uh, basically uh, either on a virtual setup or on a bare metal setup, we actually can bring up the entire, uh, uh, let's say the entire platform or the entire service of Cord or let's say Onos or anything of that. And then that can be kind of a private uh, lab or a development environment for each of those engineers, right? And secondly, this, since this is a kind of an on-demand uh, kind of solution, so there is no uh, like a scheduling or anything else there, right? So it's completely private for you. You can use it for how many hours ever you want, and then basically you can destroy it once you have it, right? Uh, so typically, we don't even store the images. So all of this is kind of written in our own, uh, it's a kind of a template what we write for each of these services, and that template gets run on a fresh setup each and every time. So that's how we bring up the entire setup. Uh, so it, does that make sense? Yeah, I, th I think so. Th it'd be great to see some details. Maybe the demo is where we really want to get to pretty quickly. But go ahead. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so regarding the uh, proposal, I think. Uh, uh, so do you guys want to do first the demo part and then come to the proposal? Does that make sense so that you guys can get a better idea of it? Yeah, if, if the demo is pretty quick, I think that'd be good. Yeah, it's, it's pretty easy. Yeah. So uh, what you're seeing right now is, uh, are you guys able to see the Firefox browser or? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, yeah sure. So this is our SD Cloud platform. Uh, so what we have is basically there are two versions available out there. Uh, so one is the retail version where uh, people could just uh, come in online and then kind of put their credit cards and be charged by the app. Uh, for example, card or not, uh, typically sell at somewhere around $1.4 per app, right? So that's from the retail side of the house. 
for the enterprise side or basically whenever we are approaching the community or anywhere else we kind of uh, white box this entire solution uh, to you guys right so basically instead of this showing criteria networks uh, basically if you guys are on board we like oh, yeah <laughs> So this is where uh, the enterprise part of it. So what I'm showing the demo is primarily around that. So basically we have the uh, primarily for card if you want to see. So we have the sandboxes. So I can just kind of uh, show how it works. So we have uh, for the card especially we have two set of uh, sets of uh, basically the architecture which we try to spawn. Uh, so this is the first one where in which we have the uh, no HA basically each of these have one specific node. Uh, so if you see from a user aspect so they come via the uh, what we have the service load balancer where we have horizon dashboard. Uh, we also have some HA proxy component there. And uh, we also have typically the uh, subscriber, uh, the simulated subscriber kind of component, especially for the VSD simulation, right? So we have it over there. We have one node specifically dedicated for XR, uh, where the containers would come on there. And then we have the uh, OpenStack uh, controller itself, which has the uh, Nova, Glance, Neutron, and all the perspective components there. And uh, then we have Onos. Right now, uh, you know, ONOS, we have the 1.6 version or the uh, golden eye uh, version of that. And then we have uh, two compute nodes uh, where in which the actual uh, containers or the service VMs would actually come up on. Uh, so this is the uh, first topology we have. And uh, the second topology is have, uh, we have is mainly from the HA of the uh, ONOS itself, right? So basically, instead of having one ONOS controller, so we bring up three ONOS controllers as well. So this is typically if you are doing some kind of scale testing or uh, basically want to understand how the clustering works and uh, how the entire solution would work as a cluster, right? So this is the secondary solution what we bring up. So most of our controllers, whatever we have, we have it in these two varieties, right? So one is uh, basically the single node setup and the multi-node setup there in which we have the uh, basically, the controllers would be in a HA mode. So, if I could ask a question, when you when you fire up an experiment or whatever a project, what, whatever you call it, um, yeah. are you executing the cord install and build recipe, or have you deconstructed no. cord and you're you're reinstalling it in with your own internal mechanisms? Yes, so we, we have not used the uh, card uh, uh, provisioner. The only thing what we actually use is, uh, so we have our own uh, setup which kind of brings up the open stack, the compute nodes, owners and everything else, right? Uh, where we kind of slightly use are the containers which uh, basically uh, you guys have built for the card part of it, right? To bring up XOS as a whole. Uh, so only the XOS part of it, uh, that is the make X, uh, I mean make and make called VPN, the part of which we guys use, that is something which is run on the XOS part of it. Right? Rest of the components such as the uh, complete bring up of the ONOS, uh, OpenStack and uh, uh, the other part is uh, uh, basically ours. So if I were to onboard a, if I wanted to bring up, and again, you can, Tell me what the right wording is here. A project, an experiment, whatever you call it. Let's call it a project, a test. Um, and I, what I wanted to do in that test was to bring up a brand new service uh, that I just created, um, which would invoke an XOS onboard operation. Um, would that would that work? Yes. So basically, what you get is the bare. Uh, so you what you get is basically the XOS up and running. Uh, you have the complete setup up and running. And then what you will have is uh, you can actually access them uh, via your infrastructure. So this is already a, uh, uh, let's say, a pre-launched version of what we have. So if you see on the cluster details, you actually get uh, root access to all the IPs, right? 
So you have the IP addresses of each of these controllers and uh, pretty much if you want to bring up let's say a new service or something else, what you can do is you can just log on to the XOS machine and then just bring up your service, basically your container or uh, the script you can load there and you can get it up and running. But if, if, uh, if, if, to, if to bring that service up required spinning up a, a Docker image on one of the compute nodes or a KVM OpenStack image somewhere, that all works according to the internals of Core today. Yes. So, so basically, you have access to almost all the uh, features there. So, uh, so you have the access to the Horizon dashboard. You have access to the Onos dashboard. You have access to the Xbox dashboard, right? So, and you have access to the entire setup as a whole, right? I, similar as you said, right? So, if once somebody let's say brings up Xbox and the entire infrastructure in let's say Cloud Lab today. Whatever he would do uh, to get that up and running in the Cloud Lab is what he would do the same thing over here as well. Uh, the only change over here is basically the uh, uh, we kind of have uh, let's say some kind of uh, service healing and all that stuff. So if let's say somewhere in the middle of the process, uh, OpenStack uh, RabbitMQ crashes or something like that, uh, this kinds of auto heals and gets it up and running into the proper state. So some of these things which we have added to kind of a service discovery kind of format, so uh, so that kind of, you have the reliability uh, option there as well. Right? So kind of that provides you a better way of uh, to use this as your development environment. Uh, Ramud, um, I, this is Jolt. Uh, I have three questions. Um, yes. First one, maybe I missed this, but as I'm instantiating uh, one of these uh, sandboxes, where does it get instantiated? I mean, are they instantiated on physical servers owned by by Criterion or? Okay, so right now what happens is, uh, so we have two uh, providers basically. Uh, so one is the, uh, if you select the virtual provider, it kind of comes in any of the uh, public uh, cloud kind of place where either Amazon or Google Cloud kind of place. And if you have uh, something of uh, wanted to provision on a bare metal services, then basically we have another option where in which we can actually boot this on a bare metal as well. So uh, what we actually own is uh, only the provisional part of it, right? So the bring up and the orchestration part of it. So the uh, so basically it can be orchestrated anywhere as a whole, right? So we don't own the servers where it comes up on finally. Yes, and then the, if it is instantiated on a on a virtual cloud provider or a, a cloud provider provide virtual instances such as Amazon or Google you mentioned, yeah. then um, I'm just thinking if you're bringing up, if you're bringing up cord compute nodes in, the, in those contexts as virtual machines, then how can cord then instantiate services that are themselves are installed uh, as virtual machines? Sure. So basically Basically, uh, so that's why, so if you're doing some kind of a functional testing environment, basically uh, the entire setup would come up on Quemo, right? So the entire uh, virtual machine or let's say if I'm bringing VSD container, uh, I mean uh, the VSD service VMs, so basically they would come up uh, on the Quemo uh, hypervisor. So again, okay. the performance would not be that great, uh, but sure. basically if you're just trying to say, hey, you know, if whatever uh, new service I've onboarded, does it work properly? Uh, does it actually bring up all the containers and, uh, you know, if I'm able to, you know, do a, add a new subscriber, things like that. So those kind of uh, functional testing you can do on the virtual environment. And if you want to do kind of a, uh, let's say, performance testing to say, hey, how uh, quickly is my VNF working? Uh, does it really give me, uh, you know, the proper throughput or any response times or something like that? Then basically what we have is you can spawn this on a bare metal infrastructure, right? So we also have a bare metal provider where in which all of this goes and sits on a bare metal. Sure. Uh, so generally that also we have different templates available right now, uh, but depending upon uh, what the uh, what is the primary requirement uh, with respect to the God community, we can kind of. Uh, so maybe I, maybe, I should, maybe I should ask my third question, which is, what, what is can you re, uh, restate what the target audience or the target consumer uh, is of your offering? Yeah, so primarily what we are, uh, uh, so the retail part is mainly uh, for people who are trying to learn uh, SDN because uh, right now a lot okay. of people that more. 
and then we have a uh, couple of uh, small companies or any enterprises who wants to kind of have an experience on top of let's say uh, SDN controllers or uh, let's say there's some company who just wants to try out Cord, right? I mean, uh, they want Thank to you. have it in a seamless manner. Uh, check out all those things are working on fun. That's from the retail side. From the enterprise side, what we do is we kind of uh, work with the enterprise uh, or with the uh, organization to actually model their uh, uh, solution, right? And then post it over there. So once the modeling is done, then basically that model is kind of available as an on-demand uh, uh, let's say on demand showcase for them. So they will then use it for their end provider. Uh, so similarly, if you want to use for cord, right? So if we work with you guys, so we will get, uh, let's say if you, your developers may require certain set of uh, clusters which you might be interested in. But when you actually want to showcase it to, let's say, an actual service provider, you may want to see a complete full HA kind of a setup, right? You want to see multiple uh, OpenStack controllers and uh, multiple OWASP controllers and then finally bring up the solution uh, to show them performance or reliability and stuff like that. So so that way we can orchestrate uh, different kinds of uh, templates for you guys and then have it on board. So you can then use this as your platform to showcasing card. So that will provide you a better way of showcasing. Is, does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, uh, in the recent past, we've had uh, we've had uh, collaborators coming and to us and saying, "Look, we'd like to get our VNF into Cord, or we'd like to get some other in infrastructure piece into Cord and show it as an alternative to the pieces that you already have in there." And we've basically told them that, "Look, we don't have the bandwidth to work with you uh, on this. You know, the the best way for you to uh, show us what you have is is to you know." recreate the card platform and then you know replace the piece with your piece or insert your piece in some way and then come and show it to us and then show it to the community um, so this might be an effective way of doing it because you know instead of having them to um, to go through the process of bringing up the pod uh, themselves maybe if they could have ready access to a pod somewhere um, where where they can they can the work that they really do is to get their piece into uh, the solution instead of ha you know first having to recreate everything. This might be an effective way of doing it, right? If they could just go to you and get um, an installed version of Cord, uh, and then they can they can fit their piece into it. Yeah. And uh, mainly, one of the quick thing what we saw in the Cloud Lab also is primarily the uh, you have the limitations on the number of days or times we could own, right? Uh, so here it's kind of you don't have to uh, primarily worry about that. So each developer could have its own personal setup per se to kind of work on and get it up and running. Right? So it, it, do you have any sense on how many users or simultaneous development tests or showcases you could support? Is, uh, the, that's the entire uh, thing what we are selling is basically doesn't have any issues with scale. So you could have as many number of people as you want. So there's no kind of a uh, master, we don't follow kind of a master slave model. So it's kind of a, uh, every node kind of configures itself and tries to find its cluster and do all that stuff. So basically, there's not one guy who is just sitting and spawning. So all we do is just spawn the uh, either the bare metal or the virtual infrastructure and then just allow them to kind of uh, understand themselves what they need to do and they kind of come up on their own. So because of that, we don't have a kind of a specific limitation on terms of how many people can do, actually... Do you, are you assuming some sustainability model or um, selling cord as a cert, you know, cord templates as a service site? Or is this entirely a an, an in-kind kind of thing you have in mind? Uh, so right now we are not uh, we are not actually uh, just primarily looking at just that part of it. Uh, of course, we do have some kind of ideas where in which how we can actually bring all of this up and running and uh, you know provide more uh, add-on services. Uh, let's say we could also expose some of the uh, uh, extra elements on top of our UI so that basically to make let's say. Uh, easing the onboarding overall process as a whole, right? Uh, maybe auto-generating the Tosca templates and stuff like that. I'm, I'm just kind of throwing some ideas there. But overall, we are just kind of looking at right now is, uh, let's say, aggregating most of the VNF, uh, SDN controllers, and all the different elements and the use cases and try to 
uh, bring it to the end user or to the end customer to say that you know hey, this is a platform where in which you can actually get your hands-on uh, experience of how the entire SPN uh, ecosystem works. Right? Uh, so, let's so, take example. so another another th thank you. So another related question is I see you've you've done the work for 1.0. Um, yeah. We have made quite a few changes. Uh, many of them actually having to do with the install process, but which I, my interpretation is that you're using in a different install process. Um, are you, is it going to be difficult to catch up with master? No. So basically I think uh, primarily with respect to the card as a whole, what we do is actually uh, we also kind of tap into uh, basically your containers and the card 1.0 as a whole, right? So I kind of had to, uh, so I have my own fork of card 1.0 containers which runs right now, right? So that's the uh, uh, my own Docker images which I kind of pull in and uh, bring it up and run it. So the moment you guys would release a newer version, it would just basically uh, me pointing those uh, that container URL to uh, I mean the container images URL to your URL and that's pretty much solved. Right? Well, so, the, uh, so just a, a quick interjection. If what I'm doing is uh, work on the cord platform, um, and, and as a consequence, those containers keep changing, and the the source for those containers are in Garrett, Cord Garrett or GitHub. Um, are you? Would you be tracking that, or would this be given a stable static version 1.x work with that? Yes, so right now it is what uh, it is uh, pointed to a stable version that is 1.x, right? Uh, but given that if you guys wanted to be part of your, let's say, CI/CD infrastructure or something like that, that's something I think uh, we, we just have to make some fine tuning, especially in terms of the uh, the application. Uh, so so the way we bring it is, let's say, once we bring up owners, right? So we have to enable the uh, Cord VPN application and some of these, right? So right now I'm just kind of directly uh, using the pre-built, uh, uh, let's say the, uh, uh, the image which comes up. Uh, but we can actually point it to your, uh, get it directly and then or directly do a compile and then push those changes as well. Uh, but again, uh, that we can see basically if you guys are interested in that model. Then that, that's, a, that's kind of a little bit of a next step beyond what you're initially proposing it sounds like. Correct, yeah, exactly, yeah. Okay. I think might scale well at least in the initial uh, days uh, we were hoping to at least start onboarding um, the major versions and at least uh, some key variations and uh, and probably some uh, uh, more compelling use cases right and uh, try and use this more in the context of development integration testing demos and as Saurav was mentioning maybe even onboarding uh, a bunch of VNF vendors uh, but clearly I think we can look at um, uh, a slightly more uh, frequent engagement, uh, especially given the amount of churn that happens um, as part of the development process. I think one of the discussions that was coming is um, uh, try to have some sort of a repository even for all the. Uh, uh, I mean, there's a more recent discussions, right? So, so I think our our hope is um, in the early days at least try and see how much we can align with respect to some other major releases, um, and then uh, work through it. Uh, in the next uh, few months. Thank you. That's, that's, very, helpful. that's very helpful. Thanks. Um, I, I know you have some more slides, but I'm conscious of time, and I think we got a pretty good sense of what you're up to. Does anyone have other questions? And and to to you folks, are there other highlights that we haven't touched upon? Uh, so primarily, uh, I, I, go ahead. Uh, so the only uh, one more thing is basically we also have the owners uh, apparently as a sandbox. I'm not sure if uh, that's something which is required, uh, but primarily we bring up owners uh, with respect to what uh, I mean OpenStack right now as a as a let's say a parallel controller with the open daylight or stuff like that as well, right? Uh, and typically we kind of are right now using the uh, OPNFV version of uh, the VPN, right? The virtual tenant networking, which is 
the older one which was written by Huawei or somebody, right? So you're using that? Right now it comes up with that. I mean, not in the card context, but with Honor's context. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, but uh, right now we are working on moving to the SONA architecture, which is uh, yeah, yeah. which is the one which is published by uh, uh, the Honor's community, right? Uh, because typically I think there were some changes which happened in this few months, which that, that's the reason we kind of uh, worked that. But yeah. <clears throat> so even that also, if you guys are interested, that's something which is out there. So uh, right now, as a proposal context, I mean, basically what we want to do is uh, we want to provide a card SD cloud enterprise uh, to you guys. So basically, that would mean having your own platform of the entire thing. Um, so what we'll do is uh, basically the entire criteria network logo and everything will not be there. It will be actually open card community. So you will have your own logo and stuff. And uh, that you can actually use for, we are going to provide around five developer user accounts for now and uh, have a total monthly usage time of around 500 hours, right? Uh, so basically for your, uh, you can use it for your showcasing, for your development, integration testing and everything else. So there'll be, I know, a few customization requirements here and there. So probably that we can work out with you guys on that. And uh, what we are also planning to do is uh, do a hackathon uh, in uh, Open Networking India, so that we can promote uh, Card 1.0, especially in terms of the Asia Pacific region, uh, where we have some kind of mind share along with different service providers and stuff, and start showcasing Card for them and ask them to develop some applications or uh, basically some use cases on top of Card 1.0. Just, just to, to interject, it'd be really great if that were Card 1.1, which will be released first of January, hopefully. Okay, okay, cool. So I think, yeah, I mean, depend, considering the fact that we are primarily relying on just uh, some of the uh, lesser changes over there, so I think we should be able to get a card for not one quickly because I think that I think you might have added a lot more features specifically on that. And uh, so as I said, so the ongoing support is basically we try to onboard it within two months post release date, but again, that's something which is like, uh, you know, the maximum time we take uh, depending upon the number of uh, requirements and stuff we have, but especially in terms of card sense, if you're finding a lot of mind shares, so I think this uh, we can try to reduce the time as well. And we'll give you platform support as well. So suppose, uh, yeah, you, uh, somebody from your use case clicked on something like provision and uh, let's say card didn't come up, so that's also some kind of support we'll give, basically the debugging and everything else. And uh, we're organizing some kind of a meetup primarily targeting around open SD in India where basically we are uh, focusing primarily on the card. Again, this is uh, mainly focused on the Asia Pacific region. I think JP, if you want to pitch in some of these things, I think uh, this would be a good time. Thanks. Uh, yeah, so I think you captured it. Go ahead. Uh, so you captured it. So, um, um, yeah, I think the meetup is more in the context of the open source SDN projects where at least the Atrium project has slightly more mind share within the ONOS community, but again, we can uh, try to take it uh, in various forums, right? And since you are reasonably well tuned with respect to what's going on within the community, uh, we can support the community initiatives as needed in the region. So, so great. Uh, other TST members, any, any comments or? So I was going to say that I think in general the I see the value of providing a, making available a platform to the court community that people uh, can can use to collaborate, um, test, um, play with uh, with court. I think that that's a great service. So I'm I'm very supportive of that. I think the, the critical part or sensitive part of this is to do it in such a way that that the there is a strong tie between what you can do on that platform versus what you can do in a real court pod. We have to keep in mind that the the the, the main purpose of the court pod is to is to go into central offices into the physical form and with physical fabric and and get the the existing access and, and enterprise and mobile networks to get a lot more uh, virtualized. If 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 as long as the this platform can make that that part of the work that doesn't require the physical hardware perhaps uh, to be completely doable and then transferable to the physical platform, 
I'm I'm all through those. Yeah, so just to quickly add on that, so I think as we mentioned, right, so there's, uh, there's no uh, primary relation between uh, the actual uh, destination place where actually the entire thing comes from. So typically since it's written as a model, right, so this model, wherever you kind of run it on, it comes up on that. So you can bring it up on the physical infrastructure to an actually a, a virtual infrastructure or to any, uh, basically, and pretty much it could be anywhere. So you're not... Typically saying that you know it has to come up on let's say AWS or Google Cloud or something. But but then does that mean that then it competes? It provides an alternative solution to existing community work to to that is uh, focusing on making core deployment fully automated because that's uh, the splintering that I think we should avoid. No no no. So it's, we are not actually going and selling this as a deployment platform to anyone, right? Uh, so what we are trying to do is. We are just kind of providing you a way of bringing this up for your primarily for development and test environments only, right? And uh, not typically kind of a, like a actual deployment, right? So that's not what we're doing. But what I'm just saying is basically you can also use it for if you want to have some kind of a setup which you're running on and you want to try to bring this up on a bare metal infrastructure, you could still use it. So that's pretty much. But we are not actually saying that you know we'll go and. This platform, SD Cloud platform, is not intended for production grade deployments, right? It's, it's not uh, for that. So, yeah, so I, 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 I agree with the way Zolt phrased it, which is I, I'm very supportive as well. I would, I would like the experience to be as close as possible to dealing with the pod because, uh, but it is the case that, uh, you know, steps one through five of bringing up a pod might not be. Um, of particular interest to a user who wanted to focus on step six, and, and this maybe gets them into development more quickly. That would be great. But we do need to stay as much in sync so that the experience is transferable. Sure, sure. So uh, we continuously follow the uh, card part of it. I mean, uh, depending upon how much free time we have generally, but I think more and more once you guys get adopted, I think uh, uh, it's in our interest as well to make it so that uh, card the uh, release versions are there, so we are also very quickly in sync over there as well. So that way, you know, we don't get left behind or something. So, could I could I just get a hear or hear a uh, a verbal show of hands from the other TST members? That sounds good to me. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good to me as well. So I'm going to speak for Andy. He, I think we would, it would be great if we had him, and I'm kind of guessing Dave's in the room there somewhere, um, plugged into this as much as possible because it's recreating in a different environment something that they spend a lot of time on. And, and that notion of keeping it, the experience consistent and transferable will be important. Any, anyone else, Mark? Um, Mark, Mark just walked out. Yeah, I kind of lost track of who all else was on online. All right, so this let's uh, let's do this and, and and let's make it work. I think it has a lot of upside. I really like the education aspect too. So you know that will take some effort, and you know tutorials on this platform and that sort of thing coming down the road would be great. Sure. So actually, we are already working on card. Uh, tutorial, uh, so could you connect with me because we've been doing some stuff in parallel and I'd like to keep those as in sync, you know, not, sure, not sure. to limit them to what we're doing, but it would be great to be able to uh, share across what you're doing and what we're doing there. Yeah, I think, I think we can work on that, yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, you're, you're welcome to stay for the rest of this if you like, but it's not, we're going to shift gears a little bit. Yeah, sure. I think... Uh, and I'll follow up with you in the next steps. Sure. I think uh, probably uh, if you guys want to catch up, I'll just be outside. If you want to finish up with the meeting, since I'm here. Oh, All right, great. I have another meeting at 11, so I'll look for you. Yeah. Sure. I'll just be waiting outside. Sure. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everyone. We're going to drop off the call. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, folks. Hope it was helpful. Yeah. Thank you. you can try to make something nice. Thank you. So um, I wanted to spend a few minutes on, uh, well, you'll see what I've got here is a, a deck 
called Chord Release Planning for Dangerous Edition. Um, but it's something I want to start early because we're, we never really went through this process in any kind of rigorous way for the, the current version. Um, <clears throat> kind of use it as a uh, template to see that we're getting the right kind of coverage. Uh, UN has been putting a lot of effort into this. I wanted to spend a little time today on this particular slide, but let me, if, if you're, are you online on the meeting? Yeah, we're, we're getting there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're getting, yeah. You in? So I'm I'm a little confused. What's going on? Are you trying to get some, get, to to get the project uh, up and running? It's coming. Oh, okay. Sorry. I think, Larry, you can just start. Yeah. Then, All right. Then, so, then, I, I, yeah, I wasn't quite clear what was going on there. So, what what, what you see is, is the one slide I wanted to spend a little time on today because it is uh, trying to hit the high the high points. And there's a lot more to this deck that we'll go over go over later. Um, and again, it's 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 borrowing from the, the the basic template from what Onos has done. So many of you will be probably more familiar with it than I am. Um, we, I think we have agreed that the theme for Mysterious Decision has been to lower the barrier to build it and using cord. That's where a lot of our focus has gone into. Everything that you see in the bullets, and so just a general structure here, is the, the high-level bullets are the, are the top-level priorities in support of that theme. Uh, and you will recognize those as pretty consistent with the epics. Uh, I added, there's a lot going on that is not necessarily restricted to what will appear what will be incorporated into the next release. And I put that under a category called exploratory and foundational work. It's a broad community, people working on other things that will be coming into play down the road somewhere, somewhere but I wanted to call those out. I don't know what those, those are going to be necessarily in the next release, but I can tell you what they are just based on activity going on now. Um, and then, you know, ideally those would show up as priority items in some subsequent release. So, for example, uh, decoupling OpenStack shows up in Dangerous Edition as an element of light and right core, just as an example. So there's a couple of, of so we can, we can discuss what's here. And, I, and if there are any comments on Mysterious Decision as to how I've captured the reality of where we are today, please speak up. But I wanted to move ahead to... to Dangerous Edition a little bit. Um, and just in looking through what people have been writing into various roadmaps and talking about, I kind of made up a theme, which we can discuss, which is we want to stabilize interfaces. We've talked about versioning interfaces. I don't know that we're going to have that rigorously and completely done for this current release, but it better be there by the, by the next one. And in my mind, I think a lot of the activity is about, quote, unquote, expanding the inventory, onboarding more services, onboarding more configurations, and so on. Um, so in terms of the list of, of priority work items, I would, I would argue the first three have to do with stabilizing interfaces and just defining them where we can. And then the last one, two, three, four, five, six have to do with expanding the inventory. What that doesn't capture is what we've discussed about, which is scaling up VSG in particular, although one could argue that's a new, it's a new VSG and that's an inventory argument. But it, what's kind of coming to the forefront for me in thinking through this is how do we want to deal with E chord, M chord, and so on. Uh, what you'll see is that I'm optimistically including the first M chord configuration in Mysterious Decision and then presuming there will be a second configuration that will come down the pike, but I don't tell you what's in it because I have no clue. And that we'll get the first release of e -Cord in, in the uh, in Dangerous Edition. Um, 
is that how we, and then, but then if I go forward, I'm, that's going to be a bullet in every release that says next release of MCORD. Um, maybe we just don't record those here, but I just kind of wanted, maybe we, it's only important to record the first one because that's a major hurdle to get synced. And then subsequently these, these are completely independent roadmaps, which is kind of where we have been implicitly headed anyway. So I'll shut up now. General comments on the themes and priorities. And two, what do people think about how to, in release planning terms, deal with the various configurations of cord like E cord and M cord? I have a clarification question, Larry. The uh, integrating E cord that's in the serious decision that is basically the same as leading up to the E cord configuration, right? It's yeah, that's right. So it's it's it was a place to record the fact that work is going on in the e cord space, but it's not going to be complete enough to include it in the release. Okay. So in that sense, it's foundational prep prep work. Would, would this generalize for service composition mean? Would it generalize for service composition? Yeah. What does that mean? Um, well, that's the, that's the essence of what we got to figure out how we're going to represent here, I think. Um, every release will have a portfolio, portfolio of services um, and a portfolio of configurations of those services. Um, maybe from a, a roadmap point of view, we, just, we, we start naming configurations to some extent, and including our core configuration. I don't mean to slight that at all. Um, and then leave it as an independent, I don't know, that's, that's what I'm trying to get my head around. How do we deal from a, from a planning point of view with all of the, uh, configurations, service composition configurations? Okay. I mean, so, so like for, so for E-Cord and M-Cord, the, 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 the difference in their in their services and, and how how they manifest how E cord and M cord manifest themselves in the platform and R cord as well for that matter is just what set of infrastructure services you decide to spawn. So in in theory what we should be what we should be aiming for is is we have a core platform which is a cloud platform and then the services we spawn them on it Rather, the infrastructure services we spawn on it define what this pod is, or what comp what mixture of this pod, what mixture of E, M, or R this pod is made up of. Does that make sense? So, I, it, it, let me try to say that back to you. You 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 yeah. emphasized infrastructure, so therefore it's far part of the platform as opposed to some particular service configuration, and that what we ought to be doing is focusing on um, infrastructure feature. X, which is required to support a particular R cord or E cord and M cord configuration, but that we ought to limit ourselves to the infrastructure pieces, i.e., the platform pieces. So, so let me let me let me let me put it this way. Let me try and take an analogy. So, uh, an analogy is not much of an analogy. Let me take an example. Um, so, in in Onos, for example, we have applications whose structure looks very much like a core service, right? And if an application provides a service that is deemed uh, useful and, uh, and, uh, and, and kind of used by a lot of people, we pull that application into the core and make it part of the core. And, and core doesn't mean, I'm sorry, core is the package that makes up the release. It's not. Yeah, well, yeah, to some extent, yeah. It's, it's, not, so, it's not kernel. No, I mean, you, you could say, yes, it, it is more of the kernel than anything else. So what I'm trying to say is, is the services that 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 E, M, and R cord bring in, right, or the the features they bring in, initially are part of are part of the services that make up E, M, and R cord. But if they're deemed general enough and useful enough, then they become part of the platform. That's how we pull in things into the platform, rather than rather than trying to figure out what part of E, what part of M, what part of R 
as far as the platform, we, we just build it and then we see, hey, actually, this cross connect thing is pretty useful for everybody. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm completely, I completely agree with that. And um, so just as an example, we know that eCord is going to require some variant of a pseudo wire connecting uh, a VSG container probably to uh, an external backbone router. Bye, Larry. Are you still there? I am. I don't know what happened, but I think I'm back. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, that was something very weird happened. But um, so, did you did you hear my pseudo wire example? Heard the beginning, didn't hear the end. Uh, so, so my pseudo wire example was in support of eCord. We're going to need some some form of I'm just going to call it pseudo wire to connect the VSG to the to the backbone uh, network on demand switch. Um, and that will go. That will be a what I think you called core or platform service. Yeah. For example, that's that, that's a good example. That's a good concrete example to take. Yeah. Okay. So is that is that like like if we build core correctly, assuming we do, then 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 E M and R core are are no more than the set of services we spawn on that platform. Okay. So let me let me say argue then that what this means is that. Calling out the first MCORD configuration is really just shorthand for make whatever changes need to be made to the platform such that the first configuration of CORD runs. Now, uh, of MCORD runs. Yeah. Yeah, and so calling those out in each release is, I mean, I guess if we know what the particular feature is, we can argue for that feature, but. Yeah, and um, kind of change subject here, but. One thing I don't see here is, um, are, are we going to think about like kind of um, rewriting or rebuilding or re-architecting XOS in some way? Did you, did you say XOS? Yeah. Well, it's kind of here, so it's it's a little cryptic. And and what will happen, by the way, is there will be slides that spell out more detail on each one of these. Um, but um, there's a there's a bunch of Yang modeling work. Some of which will will show up in in improved or various ways of doing onboarding. I mean, there's other aspects. I suppose you could argue about everything being container based, but that, in my mind, is really part of light and right cord. But this depends on how you slice things. I I, I don't know. I would rather see when I read when I read Yang modeling or or uh, model driven service onboarding or or light, light and right cord. Well, one, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily, necessarily. Well, I guess Yang model and I could tie into that, but, but, but I would rather see see some much more specific thing about reworking XOS uh, and 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 redesigning it, um, because I mean, in my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong. My understanding of XOS is that like a lot of work has gone into it over many years for many many different deployments and many, many different environments, which makes a lot of things kind of complicated in it when they really don't need to be. Um, and so and so it's maybe a right time, like we did for Onos, to, to, to take a break and, and, and kind of like, you know, look at what, what, what we need, what we've learned, and, and, and rebuild. Right? Well, so that's that's a perfectly valid thing to, to include, and, and, and we can call that out. But I would argue that we ought to be a little less component focused and a little more capability feature focused. Um, so sim well, if you're I, talking about I simplifying, I, I completely agree that simplifying the service onboarding would be a, a va valid thing to shoot for. So if it's model driven, that was really, you could argue, just a way of simplifying it. Sure, and, and, and Matteo and I have a proposal for, for, for simplifying service onboarding, uh, which, which we'll, we'll, we still have to work on a little bit, but we will, we will present it at some point. Um, but, but I, I just think that like, like having, I, I understand that you want to be feature driven. The, the danger here of being feature driven is that you, you just cut slices into the whole, uh, you, you cut a slice to, or rather you cut a vertical, yeah, vertical slice through the, through the infrastructure or through the platform. Uh, to get that feature, but we don't have a kind of. Uh, but that's I, I I really think that that a mistake that has been made is being way too component focused. Um, the 
point is that you you add capabilities and features. And yeah, at some point, the engineering discussion is around, well, you know, to get that feature in a, in a robust way, we're going to have to replace component X or, you know, do some significant work on it. Um, I don't know. I mean, I mean, okay. I, I guess this is more for an offline conversation, but but I would say, like, like, how how else do you do this? Because like, if you have you have an orchestration layer, you have a control layer, layer and you have essentially a, a a data plane layer where where there's multiple elements, or there are physical switches and software forwarding elements. Um, if you were to cut a feature set, that means that like. Your feature would drill through the orchestration and control and data plane layer for the specific use yes, of that. Yes, yeah, I, I I agree that I think we have limited ourselves in not in not doing those uh, approaching at least some of the problems in that way. Yeah, that 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 worries me. I wouldn't want to do that. I wouldn't want to build a system like that. That seems like like a, like it won't work like that. It's just like like a, like a, like for example, I'm not going to build a feature. I'm not going to specifically build a part of the fabric for a specific feature that I need in, in XOS. It doesn't doesn't make sense. It's all about like this, I have a component that provides me an underlay, provides me an underlay with these features. Uh, whether I need to add some other capability to it is, is a different story. But but it's an independent component, and I think that's largely the value of Core is that it's an, it, these are all independent components. And, I did. I didn't hear that last comment. I was asking Ali if he's arguing to put this, what he's saying, like the re-architecting, redesign of XOS on the roadmap. Yeah. On short notice, I guess. I mean, or is this like a longer term? I mean, it's going to take a while, but I, I'd like to see it started as soon as possible, to some extent. Right. Like a. Well, I would I would be very interested in, in in hearing sooner rather than later where you think the points of pain are, and I from my point of view, service onboarding is is too cumbersome, and that's why I focused on that one here. Um, okay. I mean, I mean, we can talk we can talk about these things. Um, sure. I mean. But are you looking at trading off new features to do this, or yeah. are you looking at incremental platform changes? And no, I, I, I would I would argue that at this point. It would be very important to, to even trade off features for for rebuilding XOS and taking also the opportunity to either upgrade to the latest version of OpenStack. Uh, uh, a lot a lot of things have to go in there. Um, I think I think it's it's um, you know we have we have a lot of uh, difficulties right now. I mean, just uh, the demos we had to do in the past couple of weeks. Uh, the fact that we have to bring up uh, cord, like you know, we have to physically power up the pod. Uh, we have to go around restarting a bunch of services uh, because they don't restart automatically. This is not this is not normal, right? This, this is not something you would expect from a like a core that way. Like, like you have a customer site or whatever, uh, a, a, an operator up running cord. Power goes out and they reboot the system and nothing works anymore. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. This is not okay, right? Maybe what we need to do is document or capture the pain points. Yeah. Uh, I mean, well, we have, we have, later on, I plan to document our experience bringing the pod up from Power Off, yeah. um, and then we can submit to the list and, and so meet it. I've already sent also another document. Uh, it was an Excel spreadsheet that David and I worked on about other pain points around that area as well. Um, Does this include the HA story? Not, not Power Off, but like. Goes down, goes down. Yeah, for example, like, you know, yeah. kind of yeah, I, I think it's I think it's not a bad thing to, to yeah. I mean like, yeah. like, like, like with core like with Onos right like we, we built Onos and then we tried to we tried to slap on top of it uh, HA it failed miserably right and uh, and and we came back and tested with more holistic approach to it it's not a bad thing it's a good thing right? it's a good opportunity to just feel the feature always wasn't in the I, I'm all for it. I'm completely op open to that. Don't don't interpret what I'm saying as as not. There are. Taking a shower. Larry. Yeah, I'm still here. I I I don't know what that was. Okay. Okay. But it's back. Okay.
have a different uh, topic question that hopefully will be quick. And there it says full OAM capability, and to me that's like saying full FCAPS capability, right? OAM is kind of never done, right? So, so I think that some OAM uh, features. You, yeah, I mean, can you work, can you suggest another adjective? Partial. Well, no, I mean, <laughs> there are some OAM capabilities that we want to bring into that release, and we should just. It's fine. I mean, OEM capability is one of these things that's probably going to appear almost every uh, every release. Well, right? I, yeah. The way I would say it is that OAM capability, OAM completeness for a new feature is a requirement for being done. Um, for for a story being done, that is. Sure. Okay. Um, all right. I will. I just don't want to portray that it's you know. Complete because no, no, you're, you're absolutely right. It's not. Um, um, trying to think of a way to say that. Partial is okay, but I think it's it's we're trying to hit something more than partial. Um, these are just highlight items, right? You can call them OAM capabilities because behind each of these is, is a set of stories, right? The details of what is going to be added. Yeah, that's good. Things. Good. Yeah. Okay, so this was to introduce this to get people thinking about it, and that's good. Um, we will have a more thorough discussion uh, in up. In fact, this is probably, the, by and large, at the center of our discussions going forward, or at least a, a jump off point for many of them. Is there anything else? Did the, did the release date for Mysterious Decision day change from December to Jan? Well, it's the very first day of. Oh. We're having a New Year's party with it. I mean, technically, the the previous one was September, whatever, September 1st. I would have chose January 1st, except that's a Sunday and, and it's a holiday. So whatever the very first day of, of December. Larry, could you just go to the slide with the schedule? I, I'd suggest January 15th. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, it's not there. Nothing ever comes Here it is. Here it is. Yeah, there it is. Here it is. <laughs> Yeah, but sometimes when you put things like that, then people get expectations, right? And let's not have people expect. Here's the sketch. Here's the proposed schedule. Okay, makes sense. So yeah, we've got um, we've got two. We, well, now we got. Uh, a week of this sprint and then one more sprint's worth of features. So um, prepare accordingly. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thanks. Bye. So, bye.